We now know the president's plans to release a controversial classified memo from Republicans on the Russia investigation. The White House says the president will hand the document over to the House Intelligence Committee tomorrow. This as the top Democrat of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, is calling for the chairman of the committee, Devin Nunez, to step aside. Uh, well, with respect uh, to the chairman and should he step aside, um, I thought he already had. I did too. Um, <laughs> He seems to be back. Actually, I knew that he, he hadn't. Uh, I mean, he said that he was going to uh, step aside or accuse himself, but never really did. Um, throughout this whole time, um, he continued to make the most consequential decisions in our investigation, which, which, which witnesses would be brought in, uh, where subpoenas would go out. Um, the only <laughs> bank records I can tell you that we have subpoenaed are the bank records for Fusion GPS. Um, so those bank records were willing to go to court. The majority actually went to court to fight to get those bank records. But it will not issue a subpoena to Deutsche Bank. Um, they want to find out, OK, who's Fusion GPS's clients and whatnot. But they don't want to find out whether there was money laundering involved in the Trump organization. Um, so should he step aside? Yes. Um, he sort of said he was going to do that already, but really didn't. Um, and I think we need. Uh, someone credible uh, leading the investigation. The president ignored questions about the House Intelligence Committee memo today while departing from the White House. That was the president leaving for West Virginia earlier, where he spoke at the GOP retreat. Sources tell CBS News that the plan is for the memo to be returned with redactions to the committee, but it will not be directly released by the White House. Joining us now from the White House North Lawn, CBSN political contributor and associate press White House reporter Zeke Miller. So, Zeke, the, the president's own FBI director says, no, don't do it, don't release it. Why is the White House agreeing to allow this release? You know, the White House casts this as the president trying to be, uh, in, in, in the, as the president is in favor of transparency here, but obviously there are uh, motivations a lot closer to home. Uh, this comes uh, in the backdrop of uh, the Robert Mueller investigation, the special counsel investigation into Russian interference that moves ever closer to the president and the Oval Office. That this is an, an effort here to sort of try to, we don't, we don't know exactly what is in that memo, but what Nunes has said that what is in the memo is that it discredits some of the underpinnings of that Robert Mueller investigation. So this is a, and even if it doesn't, it does certainly sort of throw a whole bunch of dirt and uh, dust in the air uh, and, and create a cloud of uncertainty around that investigation and the underpinnings of it. Then the court of a public opinion might give the president some cover. So uh, that certainly does get to why the president is so, is so much in favor of, of putting this out there where uh, the FBI and the Department of Justice have been very clear they don't want this to see the light of day. Doesn't this put the FBI in a weird predicament, Zeke, moving forward? Oh, certainly. I mean, the, the tensions between the, the White House and uh, the FBI have been uh, fraught since even before the president fire, uh, fired James Comey last year. Um, there have been the president has, has criticized uh, FBI agents, the, uh, the rank and file, even though he says he doesn't. He's criticized their investigations, the, certainly their political leadership. He's questioned, uh, he questioned Andrew McCabe, the now departing uh, deputy director of the FBI. He's questioned the supervisors of the, of the FBI at the, Depart at the Department of Justice, Rod Rosenstein, the uh, deputy, deputy attorney general. And we know he's not made his, uh, any secret of his displeasure with the attorney general, Jeff Sessions. So things have never been exactly, you know, kumbaya between the White House and, and uh, the FBI. But certainly tensions are fraught right now as well. And you mentioned, Zeke, we don't know exactly what's in the memo, but there are reports that information in this memo undermines the Russia investigation. I'm curious what you're hearing on your end. So uh, right now, it, it, this is something to do with a FISA warrant, uh, you know, that secretive uh, U.S. court foreign intelligence surveillance court, which law enforcement has to go to to get a, uh, a warrant on American citizens, um, sort of in, in foreign intelligence investigations. Um, it's something to do with what, what went into that process, which is one of the reasons why it's so secretive, because that, really, you know, no one outside of government really has seen a FISA warrant. Uh, these are not things that get released pretty much ever, and to see, you know, that we're going to see something, you know, maybe based off of that, those sorts of, sorts of documents coming out of that. Um, it will, will, will be striking just, you know, from, uh, you know, as a, you know, not just because of the Russian investigation, because just how secretive that court is and how secretive that process has been for so long. 
I want to read you a tweet. This is by former CIA director John Brennan. He writes, I had many fights with congressional Democrats over the years on national security matters, but I never witnessed the type of reckless partisan behavior I am now seeing from Nunes and House Republicans. Absent, absence of moral and ethical leadership in White House is fueling this government crisis. Is this a U.S. government crisis? And we've certainly heard that a lot from Democrats of late. And the Republicans, you know, themselves aren't entirely thrilled with where this is going. Part of the reason why there are so many questions about this is that it's never been done before. Uh, committees have never been uh, they've been this deeply divided over releasing something this secretive. Um, so it, it, it does create a, 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 a problem, you know, not just a partisan problem, but a sort of a, 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 a conflict between the two branches of government. The Department of Justice doesn't let this out. Congress says release it. Um, there are all sorts of, uh, of red flags and question marks. Uh, throughout this release, one of the things that, you know, the White House can't just post, post this on the website or email out to reporters to tomorrow. They say protocol is they have to kick it back to the Hill, and the Hill has to go through some process to release it. Maybe it has to go into the congressional record. Maybe it doesn't. There's so many questions about this because it's really unprecedented in a lot of ways. Uh, so it, it does point to, you know, is it a crisis? Uh, you know, maybe history will determine that, but certainly it's a, it is a, it's an inflection point that, you know, really yeah, nobody's, no, 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 nobody's ever crossed this Rubicon before mm. on, on either side of Pennsylvania Avenue. Mm. Nancy Pelosi is calling for Congressman Nunez to, to remove himself as House Intelligence Committee chairman. He's already, we know, recused himself from the Russia probe. Does Speaker Paul Ryan have to take any action on this? Yeah, certainly uh, Speaker Ryan did encourage uh, uh, Chairman Nunes to step aside from the Russia probe uh, after some of the antics of last year, the, you know, the, uh, the, when he we were sort of on the White House property claiming that he had sort of some sort of documents that were somehow exculpatory that really ended up not to be much of anything at all. Um, the Speaker, you know, at, at the same time, has been supportive of this coming out. He's met with uh, Department of Justice and FBI officials about this memo and in, in, in this conflict. Uh, so it's, it's unlikely to see any change uh, uh, you know, at, at that committee leadership, despite Democrats calling for it. That said, it just uh, the latest data point in how this memo has become sort of a, uh, you know, just yet another battlefront in, the, in, in this hyperpartisan environment in Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, and as I mentioned earlier, President Trump, he spoke at the GOP retreat in Greenbrier today. The memo wasn't discussed or mentioned, but he did address the upcoming agenda, which obviously includes immigration. I want to play bite for you, Zeke. I know that the Senate is planning to bring an immigration bill on the floor, to the floor, in coming weeks. And I'm asking that the framework we submitted, with great flexibility, great flexibility, working with both parties, that something very positive will come out of it for our country. And today, Senator Thune said that they need to work more on a, a narrow bill. How likely do you think it is, Zeke, that the president will be flexible? As, as he says, he doesn't want to sign something that doesn't include everything that he's asked for. Yeah, I mean, it, it was sort of interesting to hear the president say that he's being flexible here because in, in reality, he hasn't been. You know, he's, you know, if you look, go back to early last month, he had that meeting, the bipartisan meeting uh, in the White House, and he said, you guys pass something and I'll, uh, and, and I'll sign it. And then he came back after a deal had been struck and he said, you know, I don't really, you know, want that sort of deal. I want something a lot, a lot tougher, a lot uh, sort of a larger reform of the immigration system in, in exchange for some fix for, for Dreamers for DACA. Uh, so now the president sort of put out those that four pronged principles of framework, uh, the, the immigration framework that he put out uh, last week, and that, that's really kind of dead on arrival in both chambers of Congress. Republicans and Democrats want to go in a different direction. So the president's saying he's flexible. He's really not being here. He's going to have to be somewhat flexible unless he wants to own this, uh, unless he's counting on. And dysfunction in Washington, sort of stopping any sort of consensus from uh, from coming about on this issue. That said, you know, this is Washington. This in this environment, you know, they haven't gotten a whole lot done. So dysfunction might it might be a safe bet on his part. Zeke Miller joining us from the White House. Thank you for your time, Zeke. Thank you.